Hello and welcome back to Sheaf Math. In today's lesson, we're going to look at a graph that has meaning, and we're going to try to interpret or make sense of what the intercepts mean um, and what the whole graph kind of means. So let's take a look at this graph. Now this graph right here doesn't give us a whole lot. And the reason that we're doing this is because students have a hard enough time making graphs and intercepts and lines and whatnot. But when it comes to a real life situation, um, they often don't want to deal with those. Um, but they really are actually the easier ones because it makes sense. But you have to really study these things and take some time to figure out what's going on. Now, all we have here in this graph is that um, the y-axis is basketballs and the x-axis is footballs. We don't know what else is going on here. Um, now, what if I were to give you an equation? 6x plus 2y equals 24. This is the equation that represents that line. Does that make any more sense to you? Probably not. Um, so we still need a little bit more information. So we're all trying to find out, you know, is there any other information that we can get? So in a typical problem, you'll be given some sort of context. So now it's going to start making a little bit more sense. Billy is buying equipment for his PE club. Uh, the graph and equation represent how many of each he can buy. So on, along that line, you have all these different combinations of football and basketball. And it probably fits into his the money that he can spend. So what we're going to do first is we're going to we're going to look at the intercepts uh, because those are important points. So the first question is what does the y-intercept mean? And so in this this y-intercept is the point 0, 12. Now you'll notice that uh, the y-axis is going by 4s and the x-axis is going by 1s. So 0, 12. That means that since 0 is the X and 12 is the Y, and footballs are X and basketballs are Y, that means this is when he buys 0 footballs and 12 basketballs. So it looks like he is able to um, purchase it if he did 0 footballs and 12 basketballs. And so that is one combination that he's able to purchase. Let's take a look at this next question. If Billy only buys footballs, how many can he purchase? So if he only buys footballs, that means he has zero basketballs. And so that is right here. Zero basketballs. And this is four zero. So four represents the footballs and zero represents the basketballs. And if he's only buying footballs, then he can only buy four. Okay. Now, all along this line, like I said, are different combinations of where he can what he can buy we just talked about the two extremes buying only basketballs and buying only footballs but what if he wanted two footballs and three basketballs would he be able to afford it with the money he's given well that line represents the possibilities that he's able to do it now let's take a look at a third kind of bonus question what are the prices of each now we don't we aren't given really any money in in the context uh, sentences, but um, we do have this equation right here: six x plus two y equals twenty four. We know x is the footballs and y is the basketballs. So if you look at six x, that means we're multiplying six times the number of footballs. It's probably means that the six is how much it costs. So uh, we can reason that six dollars is what the football costs. So then we go to the basketballs, the Y's, and it says two dollars times the basketball. Now I don't know where he can get two dollar basketballs, but that's beside the point. So that is two dollars basketball for a basketball. Now the last little question, what do you think that 24 stands for? Well, if the left side of the equation is figuring out how much this is all going to cost with, with these different combinations of footballs and basketballs. 24 is probably the money he's allowed to spend on basketballs and footballs. So this isn't a, a particularly easy problem to do, 
Um, there's a lot of things that you have to look at, but I want to encourage you to really focus on these graphs and study them and read the context and look at the equation. They all uh, give a little bit of information about, about each. All right. Well, that was just a short video. My students are doing it in their class, and so if this helps anybody else, that would be great. Um, so you just learned how to interpret intercepts from a contextual graph. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.